Right, <clears throat> so I've uh, finally bought a uh, pump and a radiator to uh, try and cool the system. Um, there's the pump in the bottom, and the one I've gone for is uh, try to get this the Phobia DC12400, which is basically <coughs> um, the same as uh, an EK. DCP 4.0 it's just rebranded uh, by Phobia so yeah the, the specs on it you know it's a fairly mid-range kind of pump um, from everything that you'd read online uh, people have been saying that you're going to need massive pumps to pump mineral oil around or you know oil pumps or you know garden pond pumps or, yeah, well, this works fine, it really does. I mean, if you have a look at the oil, there, I mean, it's not like it's honey or marmalade, it's just, uh, you know, it's almost like water. So, I figured it wouldn't have too much uh, trouble pumping the oil through the system. It's got to travel through a uh, triple rad on the back <clears throat> and uh, two meters of tubing uh, in total so you can see the rad there so yeah you can see there that uh, so coming up the pumps the uh, tubing is just inside uh, power supply is still in the oil I'll clean all this up and finish it off once I've finished uh, testing it for the temps but yeah, it uh, didn't take too much to prime the pump. A couple of attempts, switching it on and off. Uh, and once it was flowing, uh, then that was fine. As for the rad, that's a, uh, it's a triple rad. It's the uh, Aqua Computer Airplex Revolution. <sighs> so what I will say though, even though this is only a triple rad, it's uh, it's pretty thick, so that's like uh, it's 63 mil thick. So uh, it's got a, quite a lot of surface area, uh, almost as much as um, most quads. So it is a big triple, but uh, at the end of the day, it is only a triple rad. On the back, there got uh, three 120 mil fans, which are. These, the uh, Arctic F12, uh, 120 mils, so I'd say. But uh, yeah, they're really cheap fancies, but uh, they're great. The two side uh, fans, either end, uh, I'm running both them off 5 volts, so uh, they're running at just uh, 600 RPM. So very low running fans. The one in the middle is running at the full 1350. So yeah, overall uh, using that pump and that rad and then fans, it's uh, it's been more than enough really to cool the system. So uh, if I just start it up, um, I think uh, what I've decided to do is uh, overclock the uh, CPU and the graphics card. Which is uh, what you would normally do if you'd uh, put in a custom built water, water loop. Which, as I mentioned before, this basically is uh, the same. So, just like your normal water loop, you would have the uh, pump <coughs> running through to the rad, which uh, runs back through <coughs> into the case. Now, normally you would have a reservoir. But of course the big, uh, the whole case itself, well the PC itself is the reservoir constantly running through into the pump um, and it's, uh, I've got water blocks on the CPU, the graphics cards, the motherboard, the RAM, even the hard drive. So yeah effectively what you've got is your custom uh, water loop. So uh, if you were going to put one of them in your PC normally you would only do that to overclock uh, the hardware. This has been a 
bit of a bonus, but uh, yeah, figure might as well overclock it and see what temperatures I get. So starting temps, uh, we've got uh, CPU 32, uh, motherboard 28, and the uh, graphics card 38. Uh, one thing worth pointing out, the motherboard temp is usually to within one degree the temperature of the oil. So uh, if I just check the temperature of the oil there. Um, go. Yeah, 26. So say about 27, 27 degrees on the uh, on the oil. Uh, and let's say that's uh, motherboard temps 28. It never moves roughly more than around uh, one degree outside. Just in case you've got a closed system or you, you haven't got a heat gun, uh, monitor thing. Um, checking the motherboard temp <coughs> will give you the temperature on the oil. And the other handy thing I've noticed is the fan speed there on the CPU is uh, 156, which is uh, quite low. Um, but that is a good indication of the, uh, the viscosity of the oil. Because remember, as the oil heats up, uh, the viscosity drops. So it's going to flow through the whole system <coughs> so much easier. Um, as I said, the pump shifts it. No problem really to start off with, but it uh, the flow rate is much faster as the as the oil heats up. So you can see that it's coming out there. I mean that's fine really, just going right back into the system again. But uh, yeah, as the oil heats up, especially if it gets to around 50 degrees centigrade, uh, that really starts to come out with uh, quite a bit of pressure. In fact, when I set the uh, the pump up, there's um, no connections on at all. I put compression fittings towards the rad, uh, but I just use barbs on this, and I didn't bother putting the clamp on because I thought, well, if the pipe flies off, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to hurt anything. But uh, as the oil got to around 50, uh, the pressure coming out of the pump was so much. It flew the end of the uh, the hose off right off the pump so oh yeah I've had to order a, um, a clamp to put on to uh, to put onto the housing so the uh, CPU um, originally was actually uh, a dual core uh, it was one of these AMD Phenom 2 times 2s where you can unlock the uh, the extra two cores uh, on the die uh, which is now reading as an AM Phenom 2 times 4 B55 uh, 4 cores, 4 threads it was 3.2 gigahertz and I've overclocked it there to 3.6 so it's gone from a dual core 3.2 to a quad core 3.6 uh, to give you some idea in the Windows Experience Index that's now jumped from um, is it 6.3 to 7.4, uh, which is quite a jump. So even though it seems like a fairly modest overclock from 3.2, 3.6, uh, overall this is quite a jump in performance. Um, the TDP has gone up to 160, so that's throwing out quite a lot of heat. Although I'm not sure that's really that correct, and I've increased the voltage. To um, it's about 1.42. So all in all, uh, CPU is giving out quite a bit more heat now than it was before. So if I start prying, there we go. And I'm going to use the uh, the top one as you do small FFTs and start that off right so yeah we're going to leave that uh, for about the next 12 hours and then I'll uh, update and see what the temperatures are for that <coughs> right so uh, Prime's still running at uh, 11.45 last night 
and uh, you still see there 100% CPU usage uh, so yeah we started just before midnight it's now uh, just before midday the next day and there are the temps so uh, yeah CPU to 46 the motherboard or the oil is at uh, 33 and the uh, graphics card around 35 so um, even though the oil takes a long time to heat up um, I don't think it's going to be taking that long so you know one degree in 12 hours so I'm pretty sure that uh, the fans have been doing their job uh, actively cooling and the um, whole system is it uh, thermal equilibrium um, probably within an hour or two hours of it uh, of starting up prime so let's just have a look then let's just stop prime just to confirm where is it there uh, torture test completed in 12 hours and 2 minutes so yeah yeah the temperature and the other thing is you'll notice the CPU has dropped down to 43 then but what was happening was it was going from 43 up to 46 <clears throat> and then um, back down again to 43 which normally would suggest that uh, as I say thermal equilibrium has been hit you know when it's just rising slightly then dropping back again <clears throat> and it's been doing that for about 10 hours so uh, yeah let me see uh, the final temps so next thing to do is to uh, test the graphics card so yeah the uh, graphics card has been overclocked as well so the thing to do now is uh, start up Fermark uh, before I do just looking at them see the CPU's dropped off pretty quick back down to 36 so GPU's currently running idle to 34 so I'll start uh, Fermark and there we go the big donut just leave that running now for the next four hours five hours and uh, see what that does to the temps right so after about one hour uh, Fermark decided to crash for whatever reason so um, I had to just dial back the overclock slightly uh, took that back down to uh, around 10% altogether so uh, yeah, you can see there the core 880 took it to a 10% overclock so some 3 hours 20 minutes coming up to 3.5 hours temps there uh, 56 uh, celsius so let's just shut this down and have a look at uh, the temps overall so I've got uh, CPU 36, motherboard 32 and the GPU 40 but that's dropped off very quick so let's have a look on MSI which is uh, yeah 57 so I peaked at about 57 uh, which isn't too bad, it's not too bad at all and yeah then um, graphics cards dropped off fairly sharp um, back down to 36 with the CPU the oil going to be around 33 um, the four key things to uh, bear in mind are the, uh, the size of the case itself which is uh, 25 centimeters by 25 by 25 the oil is 12 litres which is around uh, two and a half gallons uh, the system as a whole is um, generating around 250 watts max 
um, of heat uh, that needs to be uh, dealt with and of course I'm using the um, triple rad uh, with three fans to cool that uh, to cool that set up so yeah I think uh, that's pretty much everything uh, covered I have no idea how long this video is going to be uh, if you're still watching well done um, but I think that's finally just about it so uh, yeah that's it thanks for watching